Imitated, never duplicated. Here we are, a couple of silver spoons right on what the truck. Hey, you know what? So their intermodal congestion, we talked about it with the Port of LA, been a big theme. Yeah. They've been trying to unwind these things. Soroka tried to say, you know, there's only 13 can ships here. That was like one day last week. Every day it's still around like 18 to 22. So there's yeah. still, yeah, yeah, yeah. still a lot of ships, a lot of problems. Oh, yeah. And if you've been to a container yard, right, you know that there's you know that there's no real great system for moving all these containters when congestion no, there is really bad. stack them up and then they pull them off, put them on a truck and... Well, it's crazy. check out this video of this company we're about to talk to. This is, seems like a pretty decent solution. Let's take a look. By going above and beyond for the answer, Eagle Rail. Eagle Rail is an elevated, all-electric rail system that flies containers over the congestion issues on the ground. Containers are lifted and shuttled overhead and delivered automatically to their destination, bypassing ground obstacles, including traditional rail, roadways, and even open water. By automating short-haul container transfer, Eagle Rail will sequence the containers more efficiently, improve throughput of the ports, make railroad loading more seamless, and rid the roads of thousands of dirty diesel trucks. The technology aggregates millions of uncoordinated short-haul moves into one integrated port-to-intermodal digital network. And the business model's impact is designed to be as significant as that of FedEx, Uber, and Amazon. In fact, Eagle Rail utilizes both automated overhead conveyance technology and AI algorithms like those found inside today's modern robotic warehouses. And because the Eagle Rail system conforms to international container standards, it will function in every global market, enabling other investments in port and intermodal automation to pay off. Wow, joining us now, it's Mike Wychocki. He's the chairman and CEO over at Eagle Rail Container Logistics out of Chicago, Illinois. And Mike, I got to tell you, a lot of times, full disclosure, sometimes guests come on here and we know freight pretty well. And yeah. we're like, hey, yeah, maybe that'll work. Maybe it would. We saw this, we saw this video and instantly Vince and I were like, that's a winner. Well, that's what I said when I met the guy who invented it seven years ago. I said, this is a winner. And uh, then we started going to markets Partly to sell, partly to get feedback, and everybody said, I'll buy it. How soon can you build it? So that's when I got involved, and I started investing and built a team up, started getting engineering drawings done, because it was really a concept. You know, when I met, uh, met this gentleman seven years ago, there's a word in the uh, capital raising market, is this a PowerPoint or is this a real thing, right? And, and for a long time, we were just a PowerPoint, and then you saw our slick 3D animation videos, but now we're building our first prototype. We've been to 22 countries, 45 ports, and the feedback, we're, we're, we're tightening up the operational aspects, the technical aspects, but we know the market wants it. It's a big demand for it. Yeah, now I, I was reading a couple of different articles uh, found on your website, et cetera, uh, about things that you're doing. So you you discovered this passion for this through a, uh, I think it was like a 22 country trip with your family, homeschooling trip that, with your family, is that right? Well, you know how everybody has like a second and third career these days. Mm -hmm. I uh, was a partner in a marketing firm. We sold it. And my wife had this wacky idea to take our kids out of school and travel the world for a year. And I said, I can't do a year, but I'll try six months. And so we homeschooled them. We went to 22 countries. And when I came back, I was looking for my next thing. And I knew I wanted to have two, two I wanted to have global impact and the breadth and scope of the supply chain is so mind boggling when you go to Eastern uh, hemisphere and you go to China and Japan and you see ships in Singapore and you realize, you know, this, this whole thing about America being five, we think we're the world leader, but we're 5% of the population. And you go, you see the South Asia, Asia part of the world where they're moving goods at a pace and a rate. So I thought to myself, when I met this guy, something to do with uh, transportation, intermodal supply chain, and a, a, a global market sort of fit my next career. So I got involved with this guy, and uh, I started out as a sales and marketing consultant, and then I started, then became an investor, and then I kind of took the company over through passion because um, we kept getting so much positive feedback on this thing. I thought, I want to see this across the finish line. 
So you mentioned like you don't want to be the PowerPoint anymore. You've got the 3D renders bringing this into real life. What are the setup costs for, for this? How intensive is that? Is it, it looks a lot like a monorail system. It is. We don't like the word monorail. In large parts of the world, monorail is a, a good term. In this part of the world, it gets made fun of on The Simpsons. Yeah. So we stay away from the word monorail, but <laughs> it's overhead light rail, right? It's a more accessible term. But yeah, it, there's a lot of steel infrastructure, right? And you have to support a 60,000-pound container, so it's got to be very sturdy. So the, the cost, a lot of it is in the overhead of the, the, the structure. So we try... When we price it out, it's a you know a cost benefit analysis by distance. Uh, you know clearly we're a short haul solution. We're not trying to be a long haul solution. For long haul, you have traditional ground rail, you have open highways. We're just trying to solve that you know two to ten kilometer congestion, and by using uh, unused over uh, unused airspace overhead, we can fly over ground rivers. You know all these other obstacles. Um, and while the ground is undulating, our track can stay level, so we're not we're not uh, uh, married to the ground t topography. We can you know keep everything level, so it really just makes so much sense. But it is an expensive system. Um, we're very competitive with truck pricing. Uh, if you take a cost of a road versus an Eagle Rail, they typically will price a road, but without the equipment on it, without the trucks, right? So when we price it. We've got to price the rail, the lifters, the carriers. So we kind of give a, a, a complete price. Um, so, but then if you take it on a 20-year concession basis, it's very competitive to truck prices. I would think on so. Like just the, just the, the carbon footprint reduction uh, alone has got, to be, has got to be tremendous. Can you talk to that? I mean, you're reducing all this congestion, sure. but then there's all the idling and, well, and time delay in port, et cetera. So the money savings has got to be huge. We work with... Uh, uh, Price Waterhouse Coopers uh, on a global basis, and they help us calculate. We have two factors: one is financial return on your investment, and two is economic return. Economic has it includes environmental, social impact, road safety, right? So when you look at all of the factors, the economic return is actually almost twice the financial return because yeah. you can uh, decongest roads, you can take particulates out of uh, the atmosphere, you can have road safety, and and the big thing, especially for your audiences, and then redeploy those trucks for where they should be yeah. used and not running short hauls through a city. That's not a good use for trucks. And truck drivers don't want to do that anymore, right? It's a hard job to fill for these drayage turns. So we like to let the truck drivers do the long haul where they should be doing. What's the brain behind this thing? How does it? How is it powered? How does it, I, I guess, think or how does it work? Well, basically, um, everything's digital today. So on a ship, when you bring a big ship into a port, they have a digital stowage manifest where it tells you where every box is and where what port's going to be unloaded on. Now, the ship, of course, has to be balanced. So you, just by weight, you know, it's like loading an airplane, right? Front to back, side to side, depth, everything has to be balanced out. So they have a digital manifest plan, a stowage manifest, and that goes to the port. Now, port uses a digital plan called a terminal operating system, which is called TOS. And that tells you where in stack it should go based on where it's going to leave the port. Then our software is called Eagle Eye, and it's based on a combination of kind of warehouse software, a little bit of AI, and we're building a lot of blockchain into it. So then we take our digital handoff from the toss to say this container should go X and Y, um, and then we hand it to, a, say, a rail software, right? So it's, it's all kind of a digital stream. Um, sometimes... Especially in, you know, we work all over the world. So some of the developing countries don't have the, the trucking software that we do here. And they're still using clipboards and mobile phones, mm. you know. So we can, in your countries like Brazil and India, that have huge middle class growth, therefore huge port growth. We're having great acceptance rates over there. Now, here in the United States, we're having good acceptance rates as, as well. But we have, some, we have land here that they don't. We have some drivers they don't. So... It goes almost market by market, but this, the structure is, um, it's all digital, how it gets, how it gets planned. But it's, it's basically a, a, a play on uh, what I would call warehouse software, right? So what we noticed in going through these 45 port authorities and interviewing them is about 50% of a container leaving a port goes to two locations and 50% goes to 500 locations. Wow. That you can never automate, and nor should you. 
But the 50% that are just going to the nearby railhead and the nearby intermodal park over and over again, that should be automated. Yeah. Right? That There's no reason to have trucks clogging roads to do that job. Makes total sense to us. I know you have information on your site. So where should we send people to? Um, well, you can send them to us, but www weagorail.com or mike.whitechalky at eaglerail.com or tim.brank and eaglerail.com. Anybody wants to talk to us. What's interesting is our Thanks, model, Mike. you know, we, Thanks, Mike. We, we, we appreciate it. I'm sorry. We got to jump over well, to the so, next segment. A couple interesting things there, that yeah. intermodal system. What'd you think? I think it makes perfect sense. And, I, and, and you know, I, I reading through the information there, the one part that I didn't understand was the 50% goes to two locations and 50% goes to 500, right? That's an interesting statistic. And he's dead on. I agree. You, you automate those two, right? And, yeah. and you take out so much congestion and so much carbon footprint, et cetera. I, I think it's obvious. I think it's, um, I think it's a good move. Yeah, I like it.